Frostmark has gone for third-person shooting this time, a company known for the top-down and side on bullet hells. Returnal arrives this week on the PlayStation 5 and all its roguelike or roguelite magnificence. No, that's not a mistake. Even the interviews the developer has given, they've called it both. Let's see how it did. Here's my review for Returnal. Sneaking into Cyclopean digs, stealing weapons from alien cribs, and healing yourself with mysterious Mr. Pibs. Thanks to Sony for the code, and thanks to you for subscribing. Graphics are up first, and the graphics are probably the first thing you're going to notice. In many moments, Returnal is beautiful, forcibly leveraging that 4K resolution, insane particle effect sources, and interesting enemy designs. All coupled with a core level philosophy that's based around the repetitiveness of procedurally generated levels, but doing their best to make you not notice it right away by handcrafting the special parts. With influences from 2001 all the way to Interstellar and every Space War movie in between, as well as a hefty dose of what the fuckness that exists in a game like Alan Wake. And Returnal's job is to make you consistently feel the mysterious in its graphical tone and presentation, even if it's like parsing an old library with monsters trying to kill you and revoke your library card. It does this with a consistent tone throughout, but also that occasional mysterious a snippet of graphical presentation that really does cause you to look to the horizon and say, I want to go there. And getting there is half the enjoyment. The animation of the main character and the enemies themselves work in tandem to offer this incredibly slick performance and experience that really does never miss a step. It's fighting through enemy smogs of somewhat abandoned cities and recognizing Housemark's telltale history of bullet hells when an enemies release a perfectly cut grid of plasma at your face in a recognizable pattern of squares and circles. It facilitates this feeling of new and old for every moment you play. Huge stretches of Mars-like red soil in front of you pockmarked with alien ruins is also home to a massive robot squid thing that comes out of the distance like it's seen and done this 1,000 times before and, frankly, sort of enjoys it. But not to be outdone, the main character themselves looks phenomenal. From the recoil of the guns as you unleash some homing missile into the face of a homely or alien, and that creepy many-armed dance of the parasites that you throw onto the back of your body to get a plus five to, well, possibly appearance. From start to finish, from the graphics, the animations, the character designs themselves, everything is meant to put you slightly off kilter, to make you feel like everything is just a little bit more disturbing than it possibly could be, even in a story where an astronaut crash lands on an unknown planet that happens to have houses on it. One of the almost inevitable issues that we run into with procedural content is noticing that procedural content amongst the rest of it. This is something that, especially in a rogue-style game, you're going to notice more as trying is dying and dying is retrying to die at a later time. And you will definitely notice that in Returnal. Whether you die a couple times or a bunch of times, it is something that procedural generation just always looks a little bit wonky compared to everything else, especially in any kind of game that's going to be cutting up the landscapes. And this is a title where the entire way in which it plays and the idea that you're returning multiple times to be resuscitated by the breath of some alien god it really doesn't matter how organic they try to make it, it's going to be something that's noticeable. And that'll be up to you if it bothers you. One thing that I did notice is that some biomes look, well, decidedly bland compared to others. And you absolutely could remark that this belies the random generation of the creation, or it mimics the idea that this may all be in Selene's head, as well as changing the gameplay a bit. That being said, just as you notice something like that, you notice that the game also handles even those locations incredibly well. Alien architecture, whipping along the alien reeds of some creepy neon plant life, not only in 60 FPS, but with ray tracing in effect, is something to be seen to be believed. Especially in some of the lockdown areas, it's like living inside a New Year's Eve fireworks display, with all these weapons going off and creatures exploding around you and other colored things are slowing you down and lighting you on cosmic fire or pushing you around the game level. The alien abnormal feel that Returnal is trying to deliver does so at all times. Procedurally, yes, it is something that you will notice. However, technically, this is a tour de force for the PlayStation 5. It is a phenomenal looking game. It's got a couple detailed textures here and there that look a little bit low res. And there are one or two biomes that I got to say just didn't really do it for me. Overall, though, this is a phenomenal looking title that goes out of its way to offer something that is unique. And regardless if it's always great or not, certainly goes out to try to do that. Speaking of trying, let's talk about gameplay and a bit about the story. You play as Selene, a spacer, an astronaut, exploring the worlds and finding the surface of a planet known as Atropos. You crash land and begin your story from that moment. First time you die, you start there again, realizing that at some point you're in a resurrection loop and you got to figure out exactly what's going on. Each time you die, each time you live, each little bit that you go farther and farther unlocks more snippets of the story and more moments that make you question exactly what's going on, not only in your head, but in the world itself. 
Each time you die, you start out again with a bare minimum pistol, and it's a gun that basically is more sound than danger. It teaches you quickly that aim, movement, and understanding of the game's reload times are fundamental for any kind of progress. Aim is important because like a bullet hell, enemies here engage from across the locations, and their patterns of neon death lights go out in recognizable form and are only stopped by the game world itself and your body, meaning a dead enemy long past sent into its electric oblivion can still kill you if you accidentally dodge back into the way of their slower moving bullets. And speaking of dodging and movement itself, Selene isn't a slouch. She's flicky fast. She's able to sprint and dodge. And while the first appears to be useful only to move from area to area at full speed, and the dodge seems primed for up-close heroics against alien enemies, both those impressions are dead wrong. Sprint isn't just for running from place to place, where dodge is an active movement, a moment of invulnerability in the chaos of alien dinners where Selene's back on the menu. It also has a momentary cooldown, and that can leave you flat-footed for just a brief second, where you will find things like the normal sprint are almost irreplaceable in moments like that, and rarely in titles like this, including the main bosses and some enemies, where even their weapon's fire is directly timed and aimed to take advantage of a player misusing the dodge or the burst button, regardless of the direction. Where roguelike games are always at least fundamentally connected to understanding action and reaction, Returnal feels like it takes that to the cerebral next level, like a developer showed up and instead of left and right sides of their brains, they also had a top brain spec just for figuring out how to make you pay twice for not paying attention once. And yet you're never let down by the control, smooth controls, that quick twitch you feel in a game that allows you to move this way and that as some suspicious creatures squirting neon fluids at your face and you're momentarily panicking as you dodge behind a pillar and hope like any person would that a face full blast of alien goo goo juice is not going to turn you into a walking egg generator months later. What's so noticeable as you continue to play the game is that the control in the title is almost a purposeful opposite bookended to the game's own bewildering pace and style of plot delivery. As if the devs knew that they couldn't lead you through the alien trees of their creepy ass Gretel fairy tale without letting the breadcrumbs of that control sustain you through some of those downtimes. Because the story does end up being delivered to you at a somewhat glacial pace, depending on how much you explore in each location and how many times you die. And you may be thinking, man, he's mentioning shooting at the very last moment of this and there's a reason why it's because no matter how many times you prepare yourself no matter how many parasites you have mouse strapped onto your body like a creepy cupping session just a couple hits from any of the enemies in the game can spell the end of your astronaut friend and a repeat of that same damn crash you saw at the starting there is no generic timer that's going off so take your time in the game when you actually can it will end up paying off in the end as you continue to kill enemies, weapons will be dropped compared to your proficiency rating, which is then raised as you kill more and more enemies, while your damage is directly impacted by your adrenaline level as well, which is raised by killing those same enemies, but also not getting hit yourself. Meaning, at the start, it's level 0, zero. Kill some, and your proficiency may raise to the second level. But if you got hit, your adrenaline level may be back at zero, and trust me, those two are combined juggernaut and can make enemies that you think you can take out turn into a whittling factory as you slowly chip away at their damage with your high proficiency weapon and its super cool special move, but your adrenal level and bonus damages just aren't up to snuff. And any hits, of course, smash into your armor, which is your integrity rating of your spacesuit. Weapons have both their own timed reload for a quicker one, but also, once you get the upgrade, an alt fire mode as well, which can range from laser beams and heat seekers and bouncing explosive grenades and more. And as they go up in proficiency, any new ones you get will have upgrades that are commensurate with that, like abilities and damage. Each of these three things, integrity, adrenaline, proficiency, can also be impacted by parasites. Now, these you attach to yourself in the game world, each offering a negative and a positive. For instance, a huge increase to how fast your proficiency grows, but also a huge decrease to your healing ability. One thing that's vital to remember is the parasites cannot be taken off easily, and those negatives can really spell doom for you. Also, you have chests in the game. Now, the chests are usually filled with some kind of item, a temporary artifact that sticks through one of Selene's lives, or some kind of upgrade or weapon, like the energy blade, which is actually one of the permanent ones. However, those chests can also be malignant. Now, you can clean that with some kind of ether, which is a stone that you get throughout the game, and end up getting whatever is in the chest without the negatives. If you do not do so, then the negatives that can be applied to you can be tremendous, which I'll talk about in a second. Now, no matter how good you are, no matter how fast you move or dodge, you will die, and with each death comes a bit more knowledge, perhaps a little bit more of a story, or a new location opened up, or a new audiobook delivered by Space Kindle as your character discusses a future life, and being, well, ridden to death by some kind of alien who killed her, or discovering some new weapon type. No matter what, it always means that loop continues, though. Death. 
and then resurrection back to the pistol your mini map hc geiger countering enemies illuminating them as you move through the starting locations all over again one bit of magicalness in this dire circumstance that you create as you're spit out of the resurrection womb is that any of the unlocked weapons that you've got farther on in any of those additional biomes will be unlocked right when you start at the game. They'll still be at the lower proficiency, but you will get those, and that can change a good deal about the way it feels. This is aided by the excellent controller of the PS5, which has active feedback for things like falling rain and finding items in other locations. It also allows for the triggers to be used as a primary and secondary weapon function. Pull the trigger down a bit, and it aims the gun in. Pull it all the way down, and it specs up that alt fire. This will be hit and miss depending on a number of factors, I think, including past games that you've played and and just if you like it or not. To me, it worked. It wasn't amazing, but it was another cool way that the game allowed for me to feel a little bit more immersed. When added to the game's timed reloads, parasites that can stymie that reload or change the timing of things, it can be a lot for gamers to remember in the midst of a battle. But when it works, it's awesome. Then again, you can also adjust those triggers and everything else in the control section. At its best of times, Returnal elicits a feeling of sanguineness, at other times a dire desire to punch someone nearby in the face, especially if you get a bad pull on one of those corrupted chests. It's not just that the biomes are different either, it's that they illuminate a completely different playstyle. The first level requires a tightness and control that belies it being the first location, where the open desert changes that to something closer to serious sand with longer draw distance and encounter moments, where later stages evoke a verticality to the point of hurting necks and almost wanting to change the sensitivity on the x-axis to 10. You wouldn't be remiss or unique in saying that it's a bit odd to have the first level not be the second or third here, especially due to its presentation and that dogged combination of tight quarters and fast-moving enemies. However, it is a very good prep for later on, because once you get through that first level, getting into the larger locations actually makes it feel pretty easy. Now, speaking of easy or hard, let's talk about difficulty for a second. One nice thing, Housemark has stated there's a big day one patch. It's going to handle some RNG fixes, balancing of a bunch of things. It's going to add tutorials, and it's going to fix some bugs, bugs of which I did encounter in this game. I think these are all awesome. I think that there should be some look, especially when you look at roguelites. There's a lot of concentric circle kind of RNG. Here, you've got the RNG on top of RNG, and then you also have these kind of different malignant boxes with their positive and their negatives. And some of those negatives that you get, I think will end up stymieing a lot of people playing the game. And I review the game not only for people like myself who are super stubborn, who will just play through a really bad drop, and some people who may look at it and say, you know what, I'm just going to cycle everything and start over. Because again, there is no save game at all in this title. You end up just having to do it all in one sitting or, well, pause the system as you walk away. I think that's fine. People should just be completely aware of it and as I stated, the developer is as well. Now, when it comes to bugs, this is something I hope they fix. I had numerous times where parasite effects either stayed forever or they ended up magnifying at a way that I could not quite understand what was going on. For example, one time I died, I came back, and I still had the delay to the up-close attack that was, I think, four seconds versus the very quick two or three seconds. You definitely noticed that. That was verified a couple times. I also had various different bugs where the game would crash. This game crashed a number of times in later sections of the game, unfortunately, which results in you having to play the entire thing again. Jumping into sound music and voice for a second, let's talk about sound. I think this is a perfect example of good sound in a shooter. There's an accuracy here, the effects, the environment, everything assists you in staying alive when your vision deceives you or where there just is no indicators at all for those different things. Returnal did this again and again, whether you're using the game's excellent 3D effects through a home theater, the game's directional cueing is hands down one of the best examples I've seen. Excellent environmental sound occlusion, locational reverb and echo, and the integration of effects in into the sounds with side chaining effects later on in the game where I think some of the weapons become corrupted. It was actually quite unique. It does some things that we've heard before like muting sounds of rain and wind in the HUD and it does them very well. When it comes to music, I also like this a lot. It's very good. It's never really invasive, and yet, especially at different times, it audibly sort of presents itself to add some atmosphere at some particular moment. It's always creepy. It's somber. It's got this identifying moment of musical excellence when it does rise up, and then it has no problem whatsoever bowing back down and sort of letting everything go and letting it ride a bit. It's good, and it hits. It aids in adding that mystery and the audible connection to the experiences visually that you're seeing on screen. Really good music. And that brings me to voice, which is also 
excellent through and through. That voice actress, she captures that one essential feeling of mystery, and that's when audio entries are stated. She appears at times both confident in her abilities and conscious of the fact that she's living in a space version of Twin Peaks where every person at the diner has an energy weapon. She consistently gives out these little emotional cues and moments and pauses that are far less timed and planned and noticeably more there for their impact. And in, they're this nuance, almost like a person pausing and rethinking what they're saying when they know they're being recorded. It worked really well, very good voice. And all that combines for fun factor. There can be some brutal moments for the example in this game, especially find yourself on the outside of a base when the entire base is protected by an enemy in its center that gives every enemy almost invulnerable shields. And you sadly just picked up a negative on your suit that makes all of your up close attacks delayed by a serious amount of time. Now, for some of us, that is the juice. That's the best part of the game. For other people, I can see them looking at me like, okay, I'm done. It just all depends. For me, it is what added to the fun. I enjoyed that. I enjoy the control. I enjoy the enemies. Yes, the RNG shows up. You definitely notice it in multiple places, and there's some balancing that needs to be done. But still, it is hard sometimes to identify why a game is fun, especially if you're repeating the same bit over and over and over again. But this game does that, and one of the ways it does it is because it's always trying to give you a little bit of a snorry snippet here or there. Not all the time. There were a couple dry spells where I was playing, and I was like, you know what? I haven't heard much about the story in a little while. And then something would happen. You investigated one of the houses that you go into. Those kind of moments were great. There's always a sense of mystery and awe and alienness that I really enjoyed with Returnal. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy whip for sale rent or never touch it again rating system. It is a blast to play. I enjoyed it all the time. It's not a game that proves $70 as a price point is acceptable for every title. That's the reality for us now, unfortunately, with some of these companies. But it does prove to me that I'd pay $70 to play the game because it's that good. And because, well, as you guys know, I buy a copy of every single game, even if the dev gives me a code, which I did here. And I'll give it away to somebody watching the video or a patron. We bemoan games that try to do something different if they don't nail it the first time, Returnal did not nail it the first time, at least not in every single element. However, what it does hit, it hits really well, super enjoyable. There's a lot of gameplay here, and the graphics, sound, music, and voice are triple A level. It is a phenomenal style of title in this particular niche genre, so it's not going to be for everybody. You be warned on that. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Check out the patron. Have an awesome weekend.